What's up everyone, Giant Opinions. Today, I want to bring you my five under-the-radar trade deadline candidates. These are players that I think will get traded at the deadline. And these are not the big-name superstars that are all already being talked about, like Scherzer. So stick around for the last one too. That one is kind of my wild card. I think you guys will have some fun with that one in the comments section. But anyways, let's get it started. All right, so the first player I have is Jorge Polanco. He has nine home runs, 30 RBIs, around a 240 average. But the Twins, they're doing horribly this season. They're going to sell. It's almost a given. This team is kind of built to win now, and they can't do it. So Jorge Polanco, he provides some value to some teams. I definitely think he does. His on base is around 313, so it's a little bit, it's like 70 points higher than his average, which is pretty good, because if you're not swinging the bat, get on base. And he's a switch hitter. He can, he can play basically anywhere in the infield. He is versatile, and he's, I mean, he's a versatile bat too, since he's a switch hitter, so that alone gives him a lot of value, but there is one knock on him, and that is the contract. He's going to be getting paid sizable money the next upcoming years, that's the thing. Um, I think he gets $10 million either next year or 2023, and then it starts to go up and up and up. So for a team, I don't know, because we've seen what Jorge Polanco can be. He's been an all-star before, he's been a very productive player, but that contract may be a little bit scary to some other teams. But, theoretically, they could just ship him off. Or, maybe they think he could become a core stable piece. Because, I mean, he still has room to grow. We know what he can be. And he can be better. The next player is Yusei Kikuchi from the Mariners. He's secretly having a pretty good season. In 73 innings pitched, he's only given up 54 hits. Which is actually not that bad. It's pretty good with a 3.65 ERA. Whip is almost under 1. The problem with him is the contract. He has a player option next year for $12 million, So... Even if the club doesn't want to keep him around, too bad. You have to have him for at least one more year. But he has four years of club options too. So if, if he gets dealt and he excels on that team and they want to keep him there, they can do it for multiple years. So he provides some stability and security if they really want to keep him. But I think he'd provide a lot of value. He's a guy who can... He goes seven innings quite a lot. He will. He's the workhorse pitcher. Um, I guess my comparison to him is more of a Hinjin Ryu, except he could throw a little bit faster. I think he could touch the mid-90s, 95, so he can throw a nice fastball. But he's a left-handed starting pitcher, and it's hard in today's age to come across good left-handed starting pitchers. He'd provide value to some teams. The Mariners, they're, they're, they're all right this season. I think they're two games under 500 when I'm recording this, but simply they're not going to beat the A's or the Astros. So they might as well sell Kikuchi because I highly doubt that they'll keep him around for the next years because he does bring a $16 million club option for next four years if they were to keep him or the player option next year. But for a contender who just needs one more pitcher, Kikuchi might not be a bad idea. Just like Kikuchi, this next guy isn't being talked about enough. Scott Barlow, a reliever from the Kansas City Royals. This is the last, this is the last pitcher I have on the entire list. But anyways, with him... He's come in 30 games this season. He's pitched 33.1 innings. He's given up 25 hits, but he has 47 strikeouts. He's very productive for the Kansas City Royals, and this is the amazing stat. He has not given up one home run this season. That's pretty intriguing, especially for teams that need some bullpen help, like my Giants, or just any team in general. You can never have enough bullpen arms. You simply cannot... And while he, the Royals may want to keep him because they are not a bad team at all. They're hovering around 500, and I think they'll end up a little bit uh, below 500. So they could keep him for the future, but the thing is, uh, he's arbitration eligible next season. And in the past, he hasn't really gone to the point where he's been pitching this season. He's kind of been hovering around the, the high three to low four ERAs-wise in the bullpen. So, sell high, just sell high, because we don't know if he'll sustain the success. It's looking like it, but we really don't know. And if you're the Royals, they could get some more pieces in return to help complete their rebuild. Because the Royals, they're not too far off. I'd say one or two more years. And they might need some extra pieces, whether it's already an established player that they'll get in return, or more prospects. We don't know. But I think he's a very good chance of being traded. And now let's bring an NL team in the mix. Charlie Blackman from the Rockies. He's been one of the better hitters in baseball over the past, I don't know, last decade. He can swing a very nice bat. His fielding is atrocious, though. It is so bad. But this season, he's not really hitting for power that much. Not that many extra base hits. He's just getting singles a lot, a lot, a lot. But he is taking walks, too, which is uh, kind of why I put him on here, too. So it's not like he's just one-dimensional. No, he'll get on base via the walk, too. But the thing with Charlie Blackman is the Rockies, they're going to sell. Blackman is 34 years old, I believe. And he has two more years left on his deal. I believe both of them are play yeah, both of them are player options. So if he does get dealt to a team, 
they will have to pay his contract because I think he would pick it up at age 35. It's not like he's going to get it's not like he's going to be getting paid more than what his current contract is. So that is the con with that. But the pro is he is a great hitter. He would fit amazingly in the American League. I cannot stress it enough. For any team that just needs a designated hitter or even a guy who can play the outfield because you might you might just say screw it. We'll put him in the outfield. We don't care if he might cost us one or two runs because his bat is that valuable and it'll raise our team and elevate us. Charlie Blackman could be the perfect fit. He's a left-handed hitter too. You know, when you think the Rockies, or I used to think of the Rockies, I thought of Nolan Arenado and Charlie Blackman. Now it's Trevor Story, but Charlie Blackman, he's been a Rocky, but his time, it's coming up. And he could provide a lot of value to any one of these playoff teams, or teams in the hunt, that just need a little bit more spark in their offense. And this is the wild card. I am so excited. The more I thought about this player, the more I was like, there is a chance. How likely is it? I don't know, because I'm not in their front office, but from my perspective, call me crazy. I want you guys to let me know in the comment section. I think Shohei Otani could get traded this trade deadline. The Angels have simply not worked out the past four or five years with all these star players, even though they just signed Rendon not too long ago. It's not working. I know they got Jared Walsh. He's doing amazing, but the thing is, this team just does not have pitching, and Shohei is one of their better pitchers, but... Shohei has a 3.8 war. That is unreal. Best in baseball. He provides so much value because he can pitch too. He can swing a nice bat. He hit another home run today for Christ's sakes. He is playing out of this world this season. But the thing is, the Angels, in my humble opinion, they will not win a World Series with Shohei Otani. Mike Trout is out for about four more weeks. They have been on a hot streak. The last 10 games, they've won seven of them. But it's not sustainable. Their rotation is simply not good enough to win them games, and neither is their bullpen. They could get an unreal amount of talent, prospects, or established players if they were to trade away Shohei Otani. And the thing is, his contract, it isn't even that big right now. Next season, he'll get paid $5 million. But the thing is, he will be a free agent by 2024, and he'll be arbitration for 2023. So, the contract is really good. He's pitching amazingly. He is one of the hotter hitters in baseball right now. He's drawing walks, too. Keep that in mind. Um, so, I mean, Shohei Otani, if they were to trade him, which I, I I would from their standpoint, I simply do not think they will win a championship with Otani, Trout, and Rendon. Their offense is, could be electric, but Trout's out for a little bit more time, and they're going to fall above a 500. The Oakland A's, they're not slowing down. They're they're pretty much going to win the division. The Astros, they're not going to slow down either. They're a wild card contender, 100%. It would be very unlikely for the Angels to make the playoffs this year and next year, in my opinion, because the A's will get better. The Astros are still going to be pretty good, and the Mariners will probably turn a new leaf. Maybe the Rangers, too. I think Shohei Otani should get traded just because you can get so much. It's like stocks. You sell when it is at its absolute peak because he's... I mean, his rookie year, he was pretty good. But he wasn't like this unreal, amazing top three player in baseball good. Last season, he struggled He struggled pitching. It was very bad. It was injuries. But hitting, he was all right. Thing is, just get what you can for him. You're not winning with the core at Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. You're not going to win with this core. I understand keeping Mike Trout as an angel forever, but you're not going to win. Just don't do it. Sell Otani. I think Shohei Otani is the dark horse to get traded at the trade deadline. Call me crazy, but if it happens, it's here on Giant Opinion. So thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think of this video and the players, especially this last one I dropped on you guys. I know I may sound ludicrous, but hey, we don't know, and let's have some fun with the video. Anyways, I'll be back. I'll be making more videos, so thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.